All right, we're live. It has been since 2021 that I've seen any of you guys. How's it going? <laughs> we've been, <laughs> we've been, I've been sitting here. Scott's been sitting there. I've been, I've been doing absolutely there. nothing, just sitting right here. So just waiting for me to call, right? And then oh, and I never yeah. called. It, uh, what happened? Well, what happened? Oh, my God. the hell's up? Has it been since 2021? Yeah, so yeah. That's, last time it was wow. with a full panel. I did have Chase on last year. But haven't seen. Oh no! And I talked to Greg last year, but definitely you two, twenty twenty one. Last time was with the we panel. To, man, we used to do this all the time. What the hell? I know. Well, hanging, we... out, hanging out in the shadows, hanging out in the background there, letting, yeah. letting Chase and Greg do all the work. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Well, we'll definitely have to do something again. But I did want to reach back. I don't know if you two have talked about a lot. Like I talk about. Um, how I met different people. I've met Chase in person, et cetera. But you and Mark, or Mark and you, however I address you guys, have known each other for a, a good while since before a lot of the panel. So how did you two meet up? Well, I think, Scott, you knew Greg before we'd made contact because yeah. you put me in contact with Greg. So there was that. Yeah. But but look, my story is is that I was writing this book with Tracy, and and because I'm not the greatest writer on the planet, I have some great ideas, but I mean, writing is hard. Uh, I, I I use the Tom Sawyer Huckleberry Finn uh, principle of getting other people to do all the work, and so I'd seen Scott's uh, really excellent uh, TED talk on body language. Frankenstein, which, I mean, he has a, a Greg story about that. So everything mm. everything probably hinges on Greg in the end. Um, <laughs> and I'd seen that and I thought, oh, this is a really good good talk. And I love what he's saying here. And and and, and so I said, hey, uh, Scott, would you write a, a little piece in this, in this book? You know, in my mind, I'm going, because it'll mean I don't have to write it. And, and also at the same time, to be true, I was trying to get as many of the body language experts as I could into this book because that hadn't been done before. Nobody had ever kind of gathered everybody together. So I was doing that. He said yes. And, and he was so great um, just at the, the fine detail of body language and saying, hey, there's this study on this. And that I said, oh, would you be technical editor on the book? as well, which like means reading through the whole book and, and going, look, you know, maybe you should say this here and maybe technically you, you should alter this here. And, and that, in my mind, is just a lot of work. And, mm. and Scott said, yeah, I'll do that. And he said, and you should meet my friend uh, Greg because he'd be good in the book as well. And I was like, yeah, what? Yeah, Greg, get him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he can write some pages uh, as well. So that's, that's the story from my point of view. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? Well, from my from my side, I'd followed Mark for years because Mark was one. He's one of the this this. I say this with all the the love in my heart, Mark. You're one of the, of the dinosaurs of the modern body language. Fantastic. Um, whatever you know. What? Give me a word, Mark. With the modern I don't know uh, the genre. Padre. Padre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Mark Mark was that, and so I, I was following his his YouTube thing. I read his books, and Mark's one of those guys. You got to read his books. You know, you got to read all Greg's books. You got to read all Mark's books. You got to read Joe Navarro's. But there's certain people you got to you got to gather there and read it. You know, if you're going to be, if you're going to understand what's happening for real, you know, because in uh, over the years, having done my having approached things, my thing completely from study and from interrogation and and that world, and then seeing uh, Mark. The his completely different take than mine. So I was like, oh, here's a completely different view of it. He'd go to other countries and he was he was doing the, he was doing shorts before anybody else, even before they called him shorts, like 15, 20 years ago. He's been on YouTube forever, mm. you know. So and I would watch those and go, geez, you know, he's right. I see that as well. And then uh Greg I'd met a while back when I did my TEDx talk on body language Frankenstein because I stole the the body language Frankenstein, that word from he said uh, a Frankenstein a you build a Frankenstein's monster of body language. So I said, ah, body language Frankenstein. So I did a whole TED talk on uh, how we shouldn't fall prey to 
absolutes in other words it whole and that's where my soapbox is i hate it when people go to absolutes you know they pull on their ear it means this they scratch their nose it means that every time so so that's how I, that's where i i met greg so that's why i hooked greg up with mark and i thought oh this would be this would be perfect it'd be great for that because greg's written you know 113 or 114 books at this point. i think it's only 10 at the moment but yeah it's <laughs> it's up there he keeps uh what is it marianne quite busy yeah and mark you how many books have you written mark uh four Four, and then there okay. are numerous languages as well. So there's a lot, there's a lot out there, but four that yeah. I touched in English. And, and then... Chase is up to what six? I think so, maybe. Yeah, so I what I one. what I'm seeing here is that Scott seems to be just kind of lagging. No, yeah. no, yeah. I wouldn't say so. No, I wouldn't no, no, say no. so. I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> out the real world. I'm out there doing what these guys are writing about. I'm out there doing it, man. <laughs> oh, okay. You may be a slow starter and a fast finisher. Who knows? I mean, it's a long race. You, you know, it's a long, it's a, it's a long life and a short street. So, you know, there's plenty, plenty of game to play. I actually have a, a quick question. You were talking about how, you know, writing is hard, et cetera, Mark. We've, we've talked in the past, uh, 2018, I think, uh, about dyslexia mm -hmm. and uh, the challenges you have with that. I'm wondering if now, if writing a book, if you would utilize something like ChatGBT to um, organize, like, you know, you'd write it out and then mm. if AI might be something you would consider to help format or to change up or, you know, help you structurally in what you're putting out or if that was an opportunity that, you know, obviously we didn't have before. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm a massive, and, and by the way, Scott's dyslexic as well. So we, 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 oh. we share that, we share that, uh, that skill. And, um, and I was actually thinking this the other day because, you know, I, we often get asked to write new books and I, and I avoid it like the play because it's such hard work, oh, such yeah. hard work. Number one, it's like it's hard work to have a really good idea. And I don't want to write a book unless it has a really central good idea that like adds anything. There are so many good books out there on on in our area, whether it's, it's body language or behavior or or, you know, thinking better, critical thinking. I mean, look, there's masses. It's like, how do you top that one? <laughs> or what are you going to do to top that one? Or, what, you know, what yeah. else have you got to do? And I don't want to regurgitate that stuff. So, so number one, there's getting a good idea uh, that, that you, you can really stand behind. Then there's writing the thing, which is that's hard, hard work because you're not only it's the thing of creation, you're making something that wasn't there before, but then... I'm, you know, you're creating stuff with letters, which is super hard for me to for me to do. And I did do some stuff with, di you know, dictation into in the early days, you know, and when that was even hard work. Here's what I, but here's what I thought yesterday. I thought, hang on, what if I got AI to read my books, mm -hmm. and then, and it's not like AI can come up with an idea like me. It just can't. It can't come up. It cannot come up with an idea like I'd be able to come up with. But I could go, look, here's my idea, and here's all the elements of that idea, and, and write that like I wrote those last four books. You know, and, and I'd be interested to see what it comes up with. I'm not hopeful. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not hopeful that it would come up with anything, but I'd, be, I'd, give it a sh you know, I'd give it a shot over a weekend to see what would happen. It, but the thing is, Mark, it'll come to you. You're an idea guy. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Is you'll yeah. be in the shower or you'll be doing something you just where your brain's just sitting there and you're doing something, you're washing dishes or whatever. And you'll go, oh, here's what I need to do. You know, what I need to do is this. And you'll focus on that and it'll grow. That's the way that's the way your brain works, I think. Oh, yeah. No, listen, I've, I've got, I've got ideas for, for books. Sure. But, but here's what I do now, because video is such a great medium and it's so easy to do. So easy for me to do this is I avoid writing books and make video, you know, do the behavior panel. It's so, it's so much easier to, um, to get the, the knowledge out in that way. Well, that, that's but, something that people sometimes do. Both of you may want to consider is they'll take video transcripts and then run them through AI and say, spit that out as pages. And yeah, but, yeah. it'll take that structure, rewrite it to make sense. I, I see I come from the old school where you got to go to the actual research and look at it and read it and go over it and then talk to the people who wrote it and mm -hmm. go, Hey man, what does this mean? You know, I, I don't know. I, I, 
I think because of no, the, I meant your own work, Scott. I mean, well, I would hope oh, I, that you did the research on the own stuff you're spitting out on video. Oh yeah. So if you okay, took your maybe video I'm, transcript of something that you oh done, my video oh, and okay then you, you feed it through Scott. to say hey kind of write this like a in a book format versus okay. my speaking format, it's you. Oh. Yeah, you research. I'd, I'd love yeah, to I see what it. AI would come up with if you went okay. Watch <laughs> every behavior panel video, uh -huh. and come up with a book. I, I mean, I can only imagine it would come up with a complete dog's dinner. It might. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on yeah. who's talking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It is interesting, though. Anyway, oh, okay, uh, I'm getting hijacking or hijacking the concept chat. I want to put it out there. All right. If you have questions for these folks, please put them in. It would be really helpful if you type in like the word question or Q or something to flag me and say, hey, this is a question. Please ask it. Um, and then we could definitely cover that. What? Uh, let me see. You guys have done a lot of work with Dr. Phil lately. How, how many episodes have you guys all done now? We've us how many? I don't know, quite a few, you know, I, uh, I don't, I never counted. I don't know. It seems like it's what you get out there, man. Like almost 10. Out. Wow. Yeah. Probably 10. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. How, how is that? Good. How has that worked? Are, are they coming up with the subjects for you or are you coming in saying, Hey, you know, we're covering this or is it kind of a little bit of both? How do you come up with things? You, usually it starts with, with a phone call from Dr. Phil on a Sunday and he says, can you be here Monday? And so you can, we can do shows on Tuesday. And of course you go, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. So, and then depending on, what, depending on what the second show is, then usually the, then my experience, I think I've done, I think I've done all of them that we've all been on. Then we've uh, put, when all of us can't be there, you know, we usually try to have two people there at least instead of three, like we are today. If one mm -hmm. of us can't be here, Greg has got caught in that flood down in, in uh, Miami. It messed all the flights up. So if, if all four can't go, we don't do three. We only do two because it's it's we, we've decided it's a little better to do that for for our own reasoning. And like today, uh, Chase isn't here because we just needed two and Chase is traveling. So it would be easier than him to have to stop everything up and then uh and do this but usually usually he'll call or email or text the last few times it's been a text he'll say can you come out we're working i'm working on whatever the thing is and, and i'll go let me talk to the guys and then we'll we'll all talk i'll send a thing out to our stuff on signal and go hey here's what's happening everybody's like yeah let's do that so we all watch whatever the videos are that of the subject we're talking we're going to talk about and they go out there and we watch whatever's happening for example in this last one um Chase and I sat in, sat in the green room and watched Dr. Phil talk to the girl who thought she was the McCann's daughter. And mm -hmm. we watched her as he talked to her so we could have a pretty good idea of, of what we were saying behavior wise, if she was being honest or not telling it, you know, uh, or being deceptive, whatever. And then once we do that, you know, they, they have us come on and we talk to Dr. Phil about what we've seen. And he's always, the thing is, the weirdest thing about that whole thing is, is when you, when you're on there, and you have to look at him when you're talking, you know, you have to say, oh, this means he knows just as much as we know. Mm -hmm. He knows, he knows he's, he's, he's on his body language thing. The guys, he, he's, you know, top level. And well, he's so a jury him, Wasn't he a jury consultant originally? So uh, he, he was reading people to put them on juries and whatnot. Not at all, man. Yeah. So telling, so telling him this, as I'm looking at it, it always wigs me out. So I always have to say, listen, just so you know, I know, this is, I know you know this but I know I have to look at you, you know, and the, and the first episode I did, when I was, when he would ask me a question, I would turn to the audience and tell them, cause it's like training. You know, you've got people sitting there and you turn around and go, well, here's what we're looking at. And then he said, no, look at me when you do, when you're talking. And I thought this is going to be so weird telling him, you know, eye to eye, what I know he knows. That was my hardest thing to get past on. All. What about you, Mark? Did you have, what was your, did you have any problems with any of that like that? No, so I'd, I'd, I'd been, well, probably like you actually, Scott, I mean, I'd been in studios quite a lot, I'd done a lot of TV and film and, you know, that, and, and I, so number one, number one, you always look at the money. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Like, okay. You always <laughs> look at the money. Like, I mean, I know this from back in my days of doing comedies in the West End of, of, of London. 
uh, you know, and there would be a start, you know, I, w- I was never the money. I was there to support the money. And, and if you had a, 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 a gag line, if you had the laugh line, if you had the tag of the joke, you, your desire was to give it out to the audience because then they would laugh to you and you'd go, mm. I'm brilliant. Look, look at how I delivered that. But you'd have to turn in and deliver it to the money. And then the money turns out and looks mm. at the audience and takes, and that's how you build a star is you give, you give everything in to, to whoever is, is, is the name who's causing people to watch, to come and spend their money. You know, and, and not, I'm not saying, you know, uh, Dr. Phil's in that, in that position, uh, but, but ultimately he has to be the anchor. You know, people aren't going to show up, you know, each week to see us on the Dr. Phil show. They're coming for his anchoring of, of whatever theme is there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I get why, why that happened. And also it's happening because there's a camera just the other side of his, his shoulder and it's going to pick you up in close up. If you, if you go out there to the audience, that camera is only picking up the side of you. Yeah. So it's it's to get the the correct shot more than anything else. I, yeah. Mark, I could listen to you all day. That was fascinating, and it made me think of Johnny Carson. How every comedian would turn, and then he would turn to the audience every time. And I never put that together. I I just love right. that. Right. And wow. Oh right. my God. That. That well, because the, what the comedian wants is to be invited back on the Johnny Carson show. Mm-hmm. So your job is to make Johnny look good. Because but if now you make it's Johnny, Joe Rogan. Now it's Joe Rogan. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. And, and well, and, you know, and there's so many more. It's so much cheaper to have multiple cameras now. So actually you can, though, these multiple cameras can pick up on all kinds of, uh, all kinds of angles, uh, you know. That's crazy. Okay. So let's go to the uh, Julia Faustina now. Honestly, when I saw the article came out, I, come out, I was like, yeah, right. So I would have been terrible about it because my initial instinct was, okay, it's somebody coming to claim. Um, did you see anything in the body language or anything from her that was at all interesting or evocative? Um, I'll go with Scott to start. Was that, was that the uh, McCann girl? Yes, Julia Faustina. Okay, sorry, because yeah. we, we do a no lot worries. of stuff trying to keep their name straight. Uh, what what I saw and what Chase saw as well, when it, when she first, when when Doctor Hill started asking her questions, the first thing we saw was this girl really was she was being um, honest about what she thought. We weren't seeing deception. It, hmm. It's a girl who is who's who really needed a lot of help, you know, emotionally. She that's what we were looking at. We weren't looking at a, at from a. A, a different perspective of is this person lying or telling the truth? Cause it was obvious that she wanted that to be, to, she wanted to be that child. You know, mm. she sort of lost. I think that's, that's my opinion. Bless her heart. I felt so sorry for her because she felt she needed that connection with somebody, you know, the, the, but the one that Chase and I really focused on <clears throat> was the woman who was with her, the psychic or whatever. Fiona and, Johansson. Yeah. Let me tell you. That's I went out or, there ready yeah. to light her up. And Ooh. then Dr. Phil said, we're not going to do that. And I said, okay. So for whatever, for, you know, he had great reasons not to. So I was like, okay, we won't. He has said before we were on what I can't tell that story, but. Um, oh, come he, on. <laughs> no, he, I, I did what, there was one person I wanted to light up and he let me, you know, oh. it didn't get in the show. But it, it, but it, it didn't go good for them at all. It went, it was, it was really exciting. It was, and the audience loved it and the whole thing. But it was, it was. I went in inter- interrogator mode too hard, and she told everything, and it was, it wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't good for TV. I think. How's that sound? Well, you guys all lit up the massage therapist. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that guy. Well, he yeah. deserved it. You know, we we'd gone live at at, at that at that point. <laughs> And, yeah. and we were, you know, that was the first show we'd done. And you know, we hadn't been together very long. I mean, I don't know, only about a year or something like that. Mm-hmm. If, if that, I'm not quite sure. And, um, and we'd looked at video of Tarek and we had our ideas about him. And then he's live in front of us and we're on oh, yeah. video. And, and we, we were really wondering what we were there to do and like what was going to happen. And, 
and at the last moment, I think we just went, oh, let's just interrogate him. Let's just let's do get that. Him. Let's just do that. Let's yeah. just do what we do and do that. And he let us. He let because you know, we know. Yeah. Because we said to Dr. Phil, I said, look, why don't you let us talk to him? Just, just let him let us have him for a few minutes. He's like, okay. You know, he's really good at stuff like that. Dr. Phil's really good at, at, at seeing potential or seeing situations and going, okay, let's go with that. Let's let, let's do that. And I think each one of us got in there and got to light him up a little, you know, get got to get in there a little bit on that. And one of my neighbors after that, because he lived in Brentwood, which is right outside of Nashville. One of my neighbors said, I saw you on TV the other day. And I said, oh, yeah, okay, great. He goes, yeah, it went really well. I said, you know, that guy's driving up and down the street here. And I was like, do what? He said, I've seen that guy drive by. And I was like, oh, that's not good for him. You know, because he he better not, you know, he better not show up over here. So that was that was odd. That was I had to have that addressed, which nothing ever came of that. I mean, nothing did. But uh, but there was, um, but he had been driving by the house a couple of times. Apparently, I didn't see him, but one of my neighbors did see him. So, okay. One thing weird. I stepped into um, when I was talking about Julia Faustina, like I said, I I suspected it probably wasn't true. And, and folks, DNA is back. It, it, it's it's not true but um you made me think of something peter hyatt has a habit of saying you should st always start with a presumption of truth and i didn't know if you had an opinion on that like whenever he meets somebody or reads a statement as he claims the idea is okay i'm gonna start i'm just gonna read it like everything's true everything is true and then as I'm reading, if things stand out or they're kind of odd or they they are displacive, then he starts to note them. But he always wants to start with the presumption of truth. Do you have something similar with uh, baselining and people and body language? Yeah, I would say I do, which is which is not to start with the presumption of truth, but to know that you're starting with a presumption. Hmm. I don't know what that presumption is going to be, but I need to connect with my presumption. I need to be be direct with myself going okay here's what my presumption is either my presumption is they're telling the truth or my presumption is they're lying or something in between or my presumption is they're this type of person or that type of person i need to be direct with myself about that because because i want to try and countermeasure that and go what if it's the opposite what if what if it's it's not that because i need to to critically think it i have to expand the presumptions that I have. Where people go wrong on this is to go, oh no, I have no presumptions. It's like, you're lying to yourself. How do you cross the road? How do you get out of bed in the morning? What are you presuming gravity is still working? I mean, you're presuming everything in order to get on with your life. You are a pres presumptuous person. That's why you're alive. Understand that and now try and, try and expand out of that. But you can't expand out unless you know exactly where you are. But I would never, to, to the, that point of, of what um, uh, Peter Hyatt's doing there, no, I would never pick a presumption. Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I, for me, I'm not sure of the use of picking a presumption. Okay. Um, and you made me think of something else. And this could be either one of you. <clears throat> but you talk to a lot of people, um, both of you. What do you do when you come across somebody and you have to do an analysis and they, they remind you of the kid when you were 10 years old who popped you in the nose or, or did something else. I mean, have you ever run into Nobody somebody they the just chance. remind you of somebody else um, in your past that you might have had a bad experience or a good experience? And do you, do you have to do anything to mitigate it or do you ever hand it off? I know I've talked to Greg about this and he said, sometimes I'll just have a female interrogator or I'll just give them to another interrogator or try to work things out. I'm curious your thoughts. Do you want to go with right, that? Okay. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. Okay. Uh, I when I go in, I it, my view is uh, Greg and I are, are very similar in our approaches. His his is a little bit tougher than mine, but I, I'm the kind that goes in and tries to get the person to like me and make him think everything's going to be fine, everything's cool. I'm just going to be there for a few minutes talking to him. So when I start talking to someone who who might have been, it might be the person who has done something they shouldn't have done then I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me if they remind me of somebody or if they look like somebody. That really doesn't pop into my mind. I start from 
from right where we are right there. And, and, and I sometimes I'll say, well, let's talk about what happened. What, what, what's going on here? Like, I, I'm not really familiar. I'll know everything that, that supposedly happened. I've got all the everything. But I'll say, tell me what, what's going on. Tell me, tell me and make it, make it really open. So I'll see where they start. And I'll see how they tell me these things. See if they stay away from the important parts that I know that are important in the story that I already know, that I've already been told and see how close they get to that. And I just go from there. I, it, it doesn't bother me if they look like somebody that was mean to me when I was young or somebody that almost hit me in the parking lot or somebody that flipped me off coming out of the mini mart or something. I don't, I don't go down that road because I'm, t- I'm so fascinated with that, whoever that person is and why they're there and how they got there. Sometimes it's a situation where you go in, there's four or five people that are not sure who did it. So mm-hmm. you have to talk to all of them. So that's the approach I like to take. Even So if they are someone, if there is someone in that group of people that, that looks like that or reminds me of that, it really doesn't matter to me because at that point, it's not a game, but it's like, man, you got to get in there and find out who, who it is. You know, if, if it's one of those, you got to start narrowing it down. So I, I don't know. I see it sort of a blank slate when I go in and say, you're here for, you know, I'm thinking you're here for a reason. So that I go forward with that. So I'm already, I sort of presume something's up and that's the, that's the approach I take. Sometimes you have to go in and and go full on with, they know you did this. There's no question about why you did, you know, if you did this, no, I'm just here to find out why you did it. So you might want to take that approach. There's different approaches you can take, but I, so I usually just open up with, you know, what's, what's happening here? What's, what's, tell me what's happening. They think I did this or this happened. And and so they think I did this or they said somebody. So I just see the road they go down. What about you, Mark? Yeah. So look, if if I'm in this kind of situation, I'm usually trying to get information out of people that they wouldn't normally want to tell anybody. And so there's that approach that Scott's talking about there, which I would say is that this innocent approach of just going, so I I don't understand it. What's what's going on here? Like I, I will play confusion. I will be for them somebody who doesn't understand it so that they can fill space uh, around that. Um, I, I, now, of course, I'm going to have presumptions about them because I'm a human being. But again, I'm just going to put maybe after all of those presumptions. So it, it leaves more space for me to explore because just as Scott says there, this is a, a moment in time where it's you and them. And something has happened to cause you to be in the room with them and if I'm in the room with somebody professionally, it's expensive. So, like, what the hell is going on? Like, what has gone on here that causes you and me to be in this room together alone right now? That's, that's what I want to get to. And, and, and often it's more the contrary. They might say, oh, you remind me of this. You're doing this. Mm. Aren't you? you remind me of this. To which I might go, yeah, well, maybe. Some people often say that. Yeah, that can be true. And sometimes I'll go, yeah, it can look like that, but it isn't really that. It isn't that. I mean, it depends. I'll do whatever. Essentially, I'll do whatever needs to be done in order that the information comes out that's going to make things better for the people who are, who are paying. Sometimes not for the people who are paying. Sometimes it's <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, and right. I tell the people paying. I go, you know what? Uh, <laughs> you, you're paying the money, but you're not the client. They're the client. And so... And All right. so I'm, you know, I may not even, I may, may not even, in many, many cases, I won't tell you what's said. Hmm. It'd be up to them to then tell you what, what was said. Because yeah. I won't, because there's a, you know, there's a, um, well, there's a certain contract going on outside of the money, you know? Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Sure. All right, to the chat, because I held them back too long. Uh, question, if you can go back and re-interview or re-interrogate anyone who would you do and why? Oh, I know. I know for sure. It's an easy one. Mark. If I could get the chance, uh, Prince Andrew. Not that Maitlis didn't mm. do the most amazing job, because, you know, she did. Uh, in fact, in fact, even better, I wouldn't do, just send Maitlis in again. <laughs> like, like, let's do that again. That was, that was fantastic. Yeah, my, yeah. Scott, what you got? Yeah, that'd be a good one to, to talk to. But, but to re to talk to someone we talked to in person before from an interrogation standpoint, there's there's just one guy. You know, we've all got have one that got away, and I had one that get that got away from me, and, and I and I, I missed it. So I'd like to to go back and start that one over again. How um, I got to know how you don't have to name names, but 
how um, did they get by? What what was it that because I'm I'm guessing that you weren't certain or there might have been uncertainty. So I'm curious why why did they get away? It was a psychopath, and it got me. I told it it, it just came around from the from the you know, it, was, it went wide and came around and got me. And I was just, as I and it just I missed it, you know, I missed it, and you know, it's just I just missed it. All right, all right. Um, well, this will be happier for you. Scott, where have you been getting sun? Out in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so, you haven't had a backyard in a long time. Now I do. So, I'm out there with Hattie all the time. Ah, uh, awesome. Getting her outside. All right. Uh, question. Is there a way to utilize crisis mode activation in former victims when they watch videos where abuse is happening? Utilize it for what? Yeah, I'm not study. sure. I, I think I get it. Uh, so what they're saying is, is there any way you can, and, and long story short, can you can you view someone who's watching a video of, of someone being traumatized or something horrible happening and take these the cues that you see off this person and, oh. and collect that and make decisions or do a study on that? Maybe that's, that's what it is. Ooh, um, that, that ethical questions come to mind on that, yeah. like, because I don't want to cause harm to somebody who's getting triggered off of watching somebody just for the uh, I don't know. Well, there are, there also are situations where I've done things where you have where you show people you, you know you don't know you have people come in, mm -hmm. and you show them videos of of happy things, sad things, horrific things, and you see their um, their take on it. There was a, a a situation one time where I would I would show these people we'd video them right, and we'd show them all this really calm stuff, and then when I came in, I would literally kick the bottom of the door. And then come in and goes, well, how's it looking so far? And and we and see that that shock reaction, see who got shocked and who didn't. And we to make a long story short, and put all this information together from the videos and their their behavior up to that point, but see what's like when they actually get a um, a little uh, adrenaline spike from somebody, just mm -hmm. a loud noise that they're watching really something really. We've all seen that one where the, it, it shows a car going down this road real quiet and it's all green, and all of a sudden this monster jumps up in the in the video and it scares you to death. Sort of that. And uh, so I had one one time, and this this person w had been in the military. And when I did this, when I, when I and I didn't know it, and they had had some some uh, situation with PTSD, and I didn't know that. Now I still mm. feel horrible about this to this day, but I thought this woman was going to kill me because it it triggered her, and she oh. got up and and uh, made sure I wasn't a threat. <laughs> Let me put it that way to anybody in the room. Because we were doing, we're doing two people at a time. Oh wow! And she she made, she made sure I wasn't going to harm anybody. Very quickly, she got to it really quickly, and did that. So, well, I mean, what was my point? What was the question that, on that? To that point, this is exactly what films do: is they have moments of crisis in which you do do theory of mind in, and you have empathy for, and in many cases, you relive. Uh, or experience the, the feelings of some of the crises that you've been in through the film. Now, having said that, the film has a whole different contract with you. You go to the cinema or you switch on Netflix and you choose and you and, and it says at the start, hey, this this may have some stuff in it that, you know, if you're of a certain age, you know, or, or below a certain age, you maybe sh you should have your parents around or you should watch out for this. So it gives you a warning beforehand. And its whole point is to give you a cathartic, experience to make you feel better about the life and experiences that you've had by seeing the traumas of other people so entertainment does this all the time it's partly why it exists uh, can you do, so is the question can we do this in a therap in a in a, uh, a therapeutic clinical um situation well some clinicians will say hey you know you should really go and watch this film have you read that? They'll go, they'll go, you know what? Have you read that book? It's this book. It's really, you have a read of that book. And then the client comes back and they go, you know what? I watched that film. And it actually, I really, really did something mm. for me. But rarely, um, rarely will they go, hey, let's watch a film of somebody who didn't sign up to being an actor. You know, let's watch uh, somebody going through a trauma. I mean, that's not the deal. That's not the, there are some, there are some safety mechanisms. Uh, in there 
That makes sense. Um, Linda Rawlings wants to know, or Rawlings, um, will the panel write a joint book? Yeah, we, we, we've thrown that around the room a couple who, of times. Who asked that? Who asked that? Was it Penguin? Linda. Linda, Linda, do you work? Do you work for Penguin? Yeah, you, know, uh, you know, you get in contact. Harper Collins. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had some experiences with Harper Collins. I prefer Penguin. If I nothing wrong with Harper Collins, by the you're very you're very nice people, Harper Collins. Uh, but uh, but um, yeah uh, yeah. If you're a publisher, hey, get in contact. Who knows? We'll get Chat GPT to do it. <laughs> yeah, the whole show's an arc of how they wrote a book yeah, yeah. all right well you know what I, i'd like to feel partially responsible because all of you were on the show before the behavior panel existed uh no wait a minute you get no money you get no money yeah but wait a minute so the reason i met chase was because of you mm -hmm. you know the reason I met Chase was was through you we wouldn't the behavior panel wouldn't exist if you if if it wasn't for you I'll say that here. It would not, because if you hadn't made these connections, then it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened. Thank well, you. That's, that's his story, and you're still getting no money, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know yeah, what? Right. I, I, I will contest. I, I will blackmail for a, for appearances from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you can have. Uh, let me see. Question: What is the hardest body language to identify? Mm. Hardest. Body language. Well, you can break it down to say the body language of deception, or the body body language of being honest, or the when for me it's it's toughest because when you look at body language, the first thing you got to think about is whether you're seeing something limbic or something cultural. To quote Joe Navarro, which we all do all the time. So, from different countries that I'm not aware of, that I'm not familiar with their body language, that's that's the hardest for me. Someone from a country I, I'm not familiar with, you know. Yeah, so, so here's what I'd say. Um, there's, there's some internal body. There's stuff that happens with your organs and internally with muscles that you, you can't see. It doesn't show yeah. outside. And there's, there's elements like pain and stuff like that. You, can't, you, you probably can't tell that, that I have, you know, I just went to the dentist. So there's elements of kind of pain in, in my mouth. Nothing major, by the way. I'm going to be okay. But, but it, you know, how are you going to detect that? Because it doesn't present it's still body language. It's still stuff happening with my body language. And it's talking to me, but it isn't getting through to you. So how, do you, how are you going to know that's going on? Well, you can ask. You can, can ask about my experience of my own body language, what my own body is doing right now. People rarely do that. Actually, on a cultural note, how many of you have seen the uh, Dalai Lama tongue um, sucking episode? Yeah, yeah. The, the Dalai what Lama. are you talking about? Yeah, the Dalai Lama has always been dodgy. Always. Wait been a minute. What are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, God. He's always been a dodgy geezer. Oh, oh wow. You've not heard about Okay. Okay. The no. Dalai Lama was had a child with him, and he was talking to the child. And I, I can't remember all of it, but it was like, you know, you know pull my nose. This, and he's like, okay, suck my tongue. To a child uh, and mm. it's on film but i don't know but it, people are actually arguing over it saying that there's a cultural difference and that sticking a tongue out in that culture is like a greeting or something but i don't know that sucking a tongue is anyway it, it's a weird scenario i just yeah, had assumed you guys were familiar with it yeah, yeah I never, I never heard here's that my yet. my dalai lama story i was talking to a to a guy and i was saying look um I was, I was saying, look, you know, uh, time is part of body language, nonverbal. Let's just say time is part mm -hmm. of nonverbal. There's what happens and there's when it happens. And then there's the expectation of when it was going to happen. And I was saying, look, you know, in, in, in communication, um, so for some cultures, time is a really important expectation. And if you are late for something, that communicates Mm. Something in some cultures and to some personalities. Even ours, I, uh, Western culture that definitely communicates. It's like, oh, oh totally. You know. So I, I come from England. And if you're late to the game, you're not getting in. You're missing it. There's no like, mm. oh, no, we'll accommodate you. Um, you know, it, being on time, like if you are late, you lose the war. So, mm. so, 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 you know, time is an important culture. It, it's, it's one of the values of, of my culture. And, and then it creeps into my, you know, what people might call my personality as well um and uh and so this person said yeah yeah but i went to see the dalai lama and he was two hour late two hours late 
and everybody was fine with it. And it's like, he's the Dalai Lama. He could do whatever he likes. He's, he's put out there as some kind of, um, you know, gradation oh, dem demigod, essentially. And mm -hmm. so if you bought it, and, and by the way, <laughs> I said, how much did you pay for the ticket? And they were like, well, $250. And it's like, yeah, so you've invested in a demigod for $250. That's <laughs> why it was okay for him to be late. If I turn up two hours late, you will have left and you'll be annoyed. Now, if you pay $250, I might get away with it, but probably not. But if you believe that I am a descendant of a, or, or attached to, you know, some, some, some god, I might be able to get away with anything I like. Which is maybe some of what we're seeing with the with the recent situation. Might makes right, sure. That that, that does make sense. I agree um, with that, yeah. Got something from uh, Spidey of uh, Behavioral Arts. It's like hey. <laughs> Greg and Chase mushed into one person and changed their name to Eric Hunley, and this is just another Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Hey, let me let me tell you something about Spidey. You know, he's a magician. Yes, and this cat knows everybody, and he knows. So we were talking, and and I said, "Yeah, we were in Las Vegas, and Chase and I were FaceTiming with Spidey." And that's and he said, "What are y'all gonna do?" I can see he shows. I said, "Man, I'm gonna go see Shin Lim. I'm gonna try to get in there." And he goes, "Without no no pause, you want me to get you tickets for that?" And I was like, "What?" He goes, "Yeah, he's one of my best friends. I'll I'll, I'll hook you up, man. You want tickets?" So I thought, well, okay, he must know him or something, and I, he'll get me in. Dude, he got me, like, right in the middle, not like front row because that's too much, but, like, right in the damn perfect spot. It was just me. I had the best time, man, the best time. And then at Chase's wedding, he bought this bag of tricks. You know, he said, I, and, it, and it was just for me because he knows how I'm into magic. I don't know how you do the tricks. I don't, that's the thing I don't want to know. And he brought a bag, a bag of magic tricks just for me. And that's wow. all we did. He, he, he showed me, he did all of them. <laughs> and of course, people start gathering around. And, and so that took that for a while there. That was the focus of the whole, uh, the, the after the wedding party was, was Spidey doing all that. But man. And then Scott, yeah, Scott was guess. saying, Scott was saying, look, you know, Spidey, he, he literally has a bag of tricks. Like it's a literal bag. Of <laughs> yeah. 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 A literal bag that of was tricks. awesome. Fantastic. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Spidey actually. Spidey, you haven't been on the channel since last year. Note. <laughs> so look forward to you Matter coming up. back on the Thursday. Um, Emma, question. Do Scott, do Mark and Scott follow any podcasts? I think Real Crime Profile is very interesting. That's a Jim Clemente's show, I believe. FBI okay. agent. I've had him on, the, on my show a couple times. Uh, no. Uh, I, no, I don't watch any true crime stuff at all. I, I don't do I don't follow true crime ones, but I, I watch yeah. Of course I watch Joe Rogan. That's I think it's law now. All guys have to watch Joe Kyle Rogan. Kyle Dunnigan. So it, I watch I always watch Kyle stuff. He kills me. He's hilarious. Not sure every time he has something come out, I watch that. And then uh, Taste Buds, which is these in, in a nutshell, it's it's two guys fussing about they'll pick a subject. They'll say, Is uh Snickers better than Kit Kat? And one will ch choose Snickers and the other chooses Kit Kat, and they just fuss about that for an hour. And it's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite things to watch. I watch it. I watch that one every time it comes out. I've got to. I mean, I'll tell you what I got. Hang on a second. You know, I, while I have you cornered, because I, I think you might actually know Kyle Dunnigan. If you ever on a show or anything, or he's open for suggestions, tell him to yeah. offer his Alec Baldwin impersonation on Cameo, because his Alec oh. Baldwin is the best impersonation. Oh, it's the anybody best ever, doing that, and I know he sometimes sell he sells like um one of them on Cameo. He's got to do the Baldwin on Cameo. I guarantee he's got at least one customer right here. He may be yeah. the only Alec Baldwin you'll be able to get for a while as well. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Alec years. Baldwin's not even uh, showing up at his own trial, and at the rate he's going with his defense team, he's going to have a parking ticket at the end. Right. And I'm not kidding. So, um, oh, so an, you know, a good, decent impression would be maybe the next best thing at his trial. <laughs> Maybe done it and didn't show up. So yeah. I, oh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be bold you, today. That that guy is so funny. I mean, in in you know, he's 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 funny. You see him be funny, but in real life, that cat is so. Funny. God, he's hilarious, man. I think he's. I think he, he's a. You know, you hear people say, "Oh, he's a genius." Or this cat's this cat's a genius. I'm telling you, man. He's a, he's a a. I don't want to say comic genius, but a a humor a, a funny he's an innovator. genius. 
he, yeah, not only that, that whole thing he's doing with the with the face swap right. and stuff, he's got that so he can pull it off live, and he's invented something that goes with that. That's the way that kind of mind works. How can we do this outside it? Brilliant cat, I'm telling you, man, brilliant. Um, but I, I I watch Manit Paul. He's the the um, he's the guy that does the um, Kindle uh, podcast and, and videos on YouTube. Manit Paul, check him out because if you like if you like Kindle, like I have dyslexia, so it's hard to read. Nor even though I've got all these books, I still read them. I try my best. But Kindle has the um, uh, Open Dyslexic app on it, so I, oh. I get all those. So I'm heavy into that one. Then I do. Uh, I always watch Nate Bargatze. He's really good. He's a comedian. Um, what else? Nothing anybody be interested in. Think Media, that's always a good one. Mm. Uh, Mark's got a great channel. He's yeah, you, you just hit 100K, didn't you, Mark? Are you I really did. cool? I did. Did you hit 100? I hit 100K. I should have another one of these. Awesome. Along to put in, the, that's put in the bathroom or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. No, you got to put them both back there, man. You got to no, no, you're gonna have there. a gold one soon. You'd be like uh, shoving that aside. Oh, this is well, that, yeah. Well, we're gonna have trash like a hundred million views very yeah. soon, I think. Yeah, I think so we're at 93 right now. Yeah, but you're getting a couple million a month, if it looks like, or more. So, like that. we get a, you'll yeah. hit it by the end of the year for sure. A hundred yeah, million views, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think we'll hit it in June. I'll okay, well, that's go. definitely yeah. by the end of the yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Good so. Good Lord. Um, yeah. If you, wait a minute. I'll tell you how many we've got. Lifetime, 94,286,133. Oh, wow. It's coming. Somebody, somebody go and view and make it 34. Come on. Come on. Go, go, go. Georgina's here. Georgina's hey, awesome. Georgina. Georgina's um, a regular with America's Untold Stories as well. Um, love, yeah. love Georgina. Super, super generous and nice. So glad I caught this today, Eric. Love the behavior panel, learning so much. Eric has brought me to so many interesting subjects. The behavior panel is really amazing. They're half amazing today, but I am so happy to have them. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks, Georgina, for showing up. We see you at yeah. the uh, sure. yeah. uh, premiere. Yeah. Thank you. Georgina's a rock star. I mean, she's amazing. Amazing. Um, <clears throat> Susan Kramer, question. We know Scott loves talking about and is studying psychopaths. Me too. Is there a favorite type or subject that Mark enjoys? No, I don't think there is, to be honest. I, you know, look, here's what I enjoy. Here's what I enjoy. Because um, people often ask, uh, you, know, um, you know, who are your heroes in this kind of area? Or who, who do you really rate in this area and in behavior and body language? And, it's, and, and I really like the people that I'm always working with at the time. It's the same with, like, mm. business leaders. They're like, you know, people go, well, who's the best business leader you've ever worked with and it's like well the one I'm working with now you know that's always the the interesting thing for me is what's happening right now so I frankly don't care what the what the subject is uh I just want to hang around people who I think are interesting and and banter away and see what my brain comes up with in the presence of you know other people and see what their brain comes up with so I'm not I, I don't worry too much about the subject matter I mean, so, I mean, as you probably noticed, a lot of the time I have no idea who who it is. I don't, I'm not into true crime at all. I'm into I'm into trying to work out why people do what they do. It's like it's just bizarre. And the more bizarre, I guess, if I like anything, it's like it's when it goes bizarre. It's when it goes mm -hmm. like I didn't think that was going to happen. That's off the charts. That that I like. You know, I've always kind of felt, and maybe I'm wrong, that you weren't really into the true crime thing you're more into entertainment your background's entertainment and you're more into presentation people entertainment you just happen to have all these skills that work so well with the rest of the group but you, i i've never well, gotten the read like you were deep into Lori Vallow or no you know, no no, no, no care whatsoever no 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 care whatsoever for 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 true now, I have absolute care for mm. antisocial behavior because that's where the entertainment is. All entertainment mm. is in people doing stuff that they shouldn't. That's it. And it just so happens that because we make laws around people doing stuff that they shouldn't, and, the, and, the, and when people do stuff that they shouldn't, they can, be, they can commit a crime, is that you'll get the most antisocial behavior around 
crime. So if you want a good TV show, it will be it will involve the police because where else are you going to find you know easily find most antisocial behaviour? I was talking to somebody else about this today. I can't remember who. And I was saying, you know, after, after a while, TV kind of goes, oh, but can't we have something else? You know, can't we place this somewhere else? And what you'd have to do is go, well, imagine a world where if you commit a crime, um, you, you know, it's down to your hairstylist to give you the punishment. And, and if that were true, if you had that world, you know, all dramas would now be set in salons because, you know, salons would be full of criminals. And we want to see criminals do bad stuff because we want to go oh how would i deal with somebody doing a bad thing to me or i've done a bad thing in the past how are they dealing with it how's everybody managing antisocial behavior so i do like uh extreme behaviors uh in general life i like putting up shelves and stuff being just straight so if i could do anything i would i would literally someone asked me the other day well, what would you do then i was like i'd put up shelves i would absolutely put up shelves. Just nobody will pay me enough to, to have the life that I have putting up shelves. So I end up, you know, so what am I interested in? And, you know, bizarre behavior, just behavior where you go, well, I don't know if it's going on there and why. Um, and it just so happens that entertainment is, is by fact full of that. And the other thing I'm fascinated with is ideas, just having ideas, just stuff, an idea that wasn't there before somebody's had it. I love that moment where you go, where somebody goes, hang on, I thought of this. And you go, my God, I've never heard of that before. That's new. That's, you just created something in your head, absolutely new. I love those moments. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> actually, I, I just interviewed somebody who was on a show, which you may want to check out. It's called Outlast. I was not interested in it at Yeah, all. I've been watching it. Oh, I have Javier. I interviewed him uh, yesterday. But when did he leave? I haven't finished it yet. I, 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 I kind of watched a glut of it at the weekend. I thought okay. it was great because it's full of, you know. Oh, there's some real antisocial behavior oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in that. It is. Yeah. I, I had no idea yeah. it was going to turn into the. Um, it turned into the Stanford prison experiment in the uh, wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. What are you yeah. talking now, about? This time, TV show? You know, I was watching it and Tracy was watching it and she was at going. Last. She, she was Netflix. going, is this scripted? And I went, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you can't, you it's have not, to. It's not, it's not. Well, when I, I say I, scripted, <laughs> when, I, when, I'm, when I say scripted, I'm not saying they're telling them exactly what to say, but I guarantee mm. you they are pushing these situations I, together. I, 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 I talked to him about that. Going, going over and having a word and going, you know what? I, I asked what him about you, that. What if you would have... That's that for me is 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 scripting. Yeah, it's scripting. they didn't actually. They they did not. That that was something I talked to him about in the testimonials and the producers. They were pretty much hands off. They created enough of an environment that um, this stuff went crazy. So they were pretty much hands off. Yeah. So what, what part of it wasn't hands off? And and do you know if they were lying to you or not? I don't know, but you. you exactly. know what? There's, a, there's exactly. an interview. There's an interview coming out. And right. I highly recommend everybody right. check I'll out on look this at your channel. Interview. I'll take but a look at your interview. Anyway, yeah. Because there are some elements there where I go, oh, yeah, you've constructed this. So there's hands off. Oh, they, well, hands are off now. But before that, it's like any show. Oh, no, we talked about that. Look, they set any, up the scenario yeah, to yeah, where yeah. it's going to happen. That's what, that's what I mean by scripted and constructed. It's like mm -hmm. you build the scaffold, yeah, and you let them brick it up for sure. But mm -hmm. it, uh, to, to, to have the idea that you would you would spend that much money and leave it to chance. Let's spend a lot of money and just leave it to chance that we get a hit show. Not a chance. Not a chance. I mean, if you're doing YouTube, yeah, like because you're spending no money at all. Let's give it a go. See what happens. The moment you get you get people whole crews flying out to Alaska. It's like, no, there's no chance involved in this anymore. I would say. Maybe I'm being jaded. It's like a magician show where they say at the start of it, there there have been no um, no stooges in this. No, you know, everybody's a real, you know. The the reason they're telling you that is because they are. They're just lying. Oh, sure. to you. They're no, lying. No, to you. no, no. Yeah. Totally get it. We did discuss that. That he figured it out in the show, and he said, "You son of a bitch! You created the Stanford Prison Experiment, didn't you?" To the main producer, so he 
figured out that the scenario was put into place to where things could happen. But even that, people could, didn't expect it to go could. as far as you gamble as on could? I'd give you budget <laughs> for will. And right. if they don't, make it happen. I mean, <laughs> check, go back and check out the budget on that and go, do you think anybody spending that money would go, let's just see what happens? Nah. Yeah. Hey, oh, would oh, Spidey's that. channel be a true crime channel? Because I, 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 I get that one. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no. Be, we're not, least... Are we true crime, you think? No, Spidey does a lot of um, pop culture, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, but he does some. Yeah, you're true crime, yeah. I, I would say uh, out of everyone you look at, you look at a lot of criminals. We're being we're being pigeonholed. It's like being Genesis and being called, you know, prog rock. I don't like it. I don't like it, Eric. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. We will not be pigeonholed into this. Because uh, Spidey's on my list. He's uh, he's one of my top five. Sorry, uh, I'm still thinking about YouTube and podcasts. Sorry. Oh, uh, no worries. No worries. Um, Leela, uh, Leah. Giovanna, Giovannoni? Leah Gio, thank you. Question, how do you read an IFNJ when they can read you just as well? My wife's the one. I'm used uh, to it. Listen, I, I, ju I, re I refute, I, first of all, I refute the frame. So I, I, I just, you know, it, it's an IFNJ, like what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? When? When are they that? Like, are they that all the time? I refute the personality type idea. I refute the idea of personality types. Fair enough. I, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me see. Um, Aaron Morgan, question. Do you think people who grew up in a house with volatile parents are better at reading people or situations quicker? Yeah. Yeah, they really are. Because they're expecting something already. So they have their eye on everything. They have their eye on everything. Now, especially if it's a woman in that situation, they don't miss anything, man. Women, I always talk about women's brains being set up to take in more and better and more complete information than men's brains, right? And when you have someone that, that's grown, a woman who's grown up in a volatile household, they're, they're, they're ready for anything. Since they were little kids, they've been, what's going to happen next? That's my wheelhouse, what's going to happen next? But and I, didn't, I wasn't raised in a volatile household at all. It was wonderful. It was great. But when you talk to somebody who has been in that situation, man, they don't miss much at all. And that's the kind of person you want to take with you when you go, what do you think about this person? They'll go, nope, it's not a good person, or I don't feel good about them. They won't be able to tell you why they don't, but they'll just be able to say, I don't know, I, wouldn't, I, I don't feel good about that. That's one thing that women are so good at, man. That's why I think if you're married, get your wife and, and take advantage of that because you could take them to these big thing you know whatever is important when it's over goes what do you think and they go nope or yeah i think they're fine you know so i don't know I, so I, I think that's what happens with someone in that situation here's what i wonder like also. like better how like better how because what do you mean well better well uh, the question is people who grew up in in a house with with volatile parents are better at reading people i'm having to skip around the screen here oh, oh, or, I or situations that. quicker well better how because let's just suggest their bias is going to be towards noting volatile behavior are they better at sensing joy are they better at sensing pleasure are they mm -hmm. better at sensing discomfort is, do they have does their, their their the germans have a word umwelt which is which is kind of like a radar does their radar, is it tuned in a specific way? Now, highly tuned in a specific way, or is it, is it tuned for everything? Because I've met people who have, who have been in volatile situations, and there's certain things they're not very well tuned for because, mm. because the radar only has so much capacity. Now, is it very active? Yeah, you'll find people who, who have been through trauma are, are, are hyper, hyper aware. But are they hyper aware of everything and then being able to take that everything and pass it into buckets of experience which 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 are equally spread out i don't know whether that's true so are they now are they better at at being cautious when there are signals of volatility yeah absolutely they will be better at being cautious and if they actively or passively go into situations of volatility 
they will see that volatility better than anybody else who hasn't been in that situation. But you wouldn't want to extrapolate that to go, they're good at everything. I, I, I don't know. Is there something in the middle? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Scott. I was just thinking oh. that realistically, if somebody's in a volatile situation, especially growing up, then that would mean they're practicing um, exposing their senses on reading the room from a very early age, much like somebody being a native sp speaker of Spanish from being a child, if they're using the language a lot when they're a child, they're going to be better as an adult than, let's say, the person who starts learning Spanish at 13, 14, 15, sure. more naturally. And I'm wondering sure. if that's kind of where they're going with it. I see what you're saying about well, the, so, the so tuning. You say, Eric, like reading the room, which room? They got very good at reading one room with some mm -hmm. people in it. That's not every room. Yeah, they got good at Spanish, sure. but how's their Swahili? Oh, so I, I, I get that. Same, it's not the same thing. And but, so, but they're, they're still they're tuned in language. their mind to use it. What I'm saying is that they're still tuned in their mind to be right. uh, be perceptive at all and open to okay. well, you're, you're wanting an idea of they, they, they were in this situation. Here's, I think, the narrative that's going on here is they're in this awful situation. Wouldn't be great if the redemption of that is they, they get this gift of being mm -hmm. great at everything. Be careful because well, I don't know what this is, because we have no science <laughs> around this. So sure. be careful that you're not you're not creating an ideal which says if you get hurt, you get a gift, which is you get to be brilliant at something. Not everybody does. No, people get hurt, and life gets worse and worse and worse, and nothing good happens. Okay, uh, now let's take what you're saying and put it with in that in the volatile situation of the volatile uh, home. And say that's all that happens. Most of the time, it's not ball. It's not bad. Traumatic things happen all the time. You get good and bad, especially if you're dealing with a okay. narcissistic yes. parent. So there'll be good things and there'll be bad things. But I think you start. There's this. There's this point you start at, and you, whatever's going to happen, you're waiting on to see if it's going to go this way or that way. I think you're familiar with both sides of it. That's what makes you such a good reader of that, because when you see it starting to just a little, once it blows up over here, you see that spark go off before it blows up. And if it's going to be nice, you see that spark go off to make it a nice experience or something mellow might may, may, may look different as it comes out as a mellow experience. So I think they start from point zero. I don't think they're expecting bad, which I can see what you're saying, Mark. I think what they're expecting is anything. They say, I don't know where this is going to go. Let's check it out and see. Then they see those little things that, that, men don't quite often often see as well you see those little things in the breath the nostrils the moving around stiffening up would be part of that before they get mad or before they relax i think just being my wheelhouse being what's going to happen next that's the way i i see things like that and i think that's the way they do as well because i've talked to quite a few people that, that have been raised in volatile homes and my impression was and i could be completely wrong but from my point of view it looks like they start off at this one point every time and go okay, it's going this way, or okay, it looks like it's this, or it's going to be a, you know, it's going to start going and then you then mm. go over this way and then fishtail over this way or whatever. So I think they start at point zero and then they take it like we were talking earlier and you, you, you see what's happening and then make decisions from there about what's happening as you go along. That's what it looks like to me. That's if, what if it helps, you... I had a volatile childhood. Mm. And so, okay, what, so, so, so would it, you agree? Would you agree with the statement from Aaron? Uh, absolutely. Because it's, it's just like, um, have you ever heard the term of war, you know, a description of war, that war is is hours and hours and hours of complete boredom punctuated by seconds Horror. and minutes of absolute terror? Well, it is kind of like that. And when I say I'm saying read the room because, no, it's not always bad and you don't know how are they reacting? And it's like, oh, this is a good day. Oh, look at that. They're happy. Let me keep doing that. They're happy, 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 happy. And you're continuing on to do it, and you're responding accordingly, good, bad, otherwise. I wasn't only exposed to people who had ill intent and volatility. I was exposed to a lot of good people. And I could feel the warmth and the nurturing from them. And, and my grandmother, I could read her just fine. She was just love and joy. So I think, and that's what I was trying to say about the language of just having the my mind open to being able to feel what's going on around me versus being so focused on on myself and whatever I'm doing is all I'm talking about. And if somebody is experiencing that and in taking very early on and they've been pulling in information like that their entire lives, it's just a matter of practice. And I'm not saying that they're 
uh, better as a person or something. I'm saying that they have a little more experience. Like you and Scott can run circles around me all day with body language. Why well, you've been doing it a lot and you've been studying it over and over for a lot of years. So I'll always be behind you by a decade or two. Always. It doesn't mean that you're better people. I have to compare myself to where you were 20 years ago. So that, that's what I'm trying to say about when a person is a child. And, and Scott, you did a much better job of describing that. It is not um, 100% volatile. Volatility is in, in, in you know specific times. So here's what I'd say is, is that nobody can dispute your own experience of this and where you think you are on this. Can we extrapolate that out into a generalization? Well, you can if you want to, and people will. Sure. I would never personally extrapolate that out into a generalization. You, you know, what you've experienced and, you, and you're, you know, fantastic, you know, forceful, emotional, uh, you know, rendering of that. I would never dispute that. To then go and others are like me, that's well, possible. Like, like what you say is, is true. But the rest of it, I'm like, yeah, possibly, possibly. I don't know. Like, I'd have to, I'd have to find out more about that. Well, a good, a good place to check too, if you want to find adults who are particularly in tune of any kind of danger signal or things around them, talk to ex-cons, because prisoners also are pretty good at reading. They're the um, best. Uh, reading other people and what may be going on, because. They're they're always focused. Am I in danger? Am I in danger? So they they're very good at danger. Now I I will go with you on that mark and say, well, they may not be, be very good at the whole. Oh, it's a birthday surprise, and they might overreact one way or the other. But uh, prisoners are uh, pretty skilled at picking up some of the currents. They're the best. Yeah, no, I I don't know. Um, that was an interesting sidetrack though. I love those. Yeah. Let me see. Emma, question. Is the a behavior analysis thing hard to switch off so you don't go into reading like a personal relationship or what a partner is saying or doing? We'll say it is. You know, you go out, you meet people, they go, oh, I've got to watch what I'm doing. You go, ah, no, it doesn't work that way. It does work that way. You know, so you'll say, oh, yeah, it's, I don't, it, no, it's turned off or whatever. It's not. I mean, how could you? You know, because you're watching that person. Yeah, you can't turn and, off your instinct. Mm -mm. but don't you kind of get comfortable to where you're just numb? And if there's nothing standing out, I mean, you know, it's like, Oh, with uh, your person, people, yeah. you know, people are lying all the time. You know, it's like, Oh, that's a great oh. shirt. Oh, they don't think it's a great yeah. shirt. But Mark, yeah, yeah, that's good hair. Yeah. You know, what, what, whatever it might be that, you know, there's those certain, you know, elements. And I imagine you're just kind of, okay. You know, well, yeah, if you want to be social, like if you yeah. want to get on with other people, you cannot analyze them all the time and then give them back the analysis unasked for. That's antisocial behavior. Mm. But that's that's now. Listen, there are some people out there who 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 will analyze a situation and give their analysis directly to people who haven't asked for it, and they often need somebody <laughs> with them to help oh. them around the room. And they often that person will go, "Oh, it's okay. They don't they don't mean that." You know, mm -hmm. they may explain oh, yeah. to you what what their situation is. You know, in order that that person doesn't get, you know, isn't doesn't get ejected from from the room. So look, there's your instinct, and you can't shut off your instinct. You can. You, there's an injection that you could give, somebody could give you in your in your brainstem, or you could just <laughs> cut it off. Like oh, that, stop okay. your instinct. Uh, but that's you know, you you can't do that to other people, and you shouldn't do that to yourself. Um, you know, if you can avoid it. So, so there's that. So your instinct is always going to be there. What you can do is countermeasure your instinct by knowing it's there in the first place. Yeah. And, and then there's, you know, what, what we're often doing, which is using our cognitive ability, not mm -hmm. our instinct, our cognitive ability to go, here's all the information that we have. We're getting information from other people. We're putting it in context. We're putting it in a timeline. That's not instinct. Instinct doesn't do that. Instinct goes, here's my best guess right now for my own benefit, for my own safety. That's sure. all the instinct does. And so it biases towards the negative, and it doesn't care about being accurate. It just cares about being safe today. Survival. Tomorrow. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, so, well, that's like if you see a giant dog, and I'm not trying to pick on but if you see a giant Rottweiler, 
you're going to be a little bit cautious, and it might be the sweetest oh, dog in the world. Don't second think that one. <laughs> <laughs> if, you see, if you see a fast moving object in your peripheral vision, you won't get to second think it. You will jump back. Well, it yeah. saved your life on a number of occasions. And on a number of occasions, you've got gone, hang on, that was a paper bag blowing in the breeze. That's happened to me. I, I was in London. I jumped, like I jumped across the street. Like I thought that is predator below. My instinct went predator below. I look at it, it's a paper bag blowing in the breeze. And your wife and children were on the, on the other side of the street going, why did you run over there? No, I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't married. I had no kids at the time. But it was one of the things that I went, what is it about the human mind that would cause that to happen for my benefit? I was so inaccurate. I was so inaccurate. And I made this, I had this big reaction to it. <clears throat> why would evolution keep that? Well, my safety. And then there's your cognitive mind that after it can go, you idiot. I, I've and got then you one go and investigate, like why your cognitive mind can work out why your brain did that. Your in your instinct will never work out why it did it. I I, I actually have one of those too that um, was a, a beautiful, frameable moment of making me feel silly as hell. But I I, I would be, I was out running and I would run up to about thirteen miles at a time, and I always ran after work and it would be at night, <laughs> and I was running. Um, on Fort Monroe, and there's a bridge, you know, literally over this river, uh, a narrow bridge. And I'm running on the sidewalk, and there's this tall figure, and nobody else is out there. I'm by myself. This tall, narrow figure in all black in the middle of the night. And this is kind of a warm night. I'm wearing shorts and whatever. And they're fully garbed up in black. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, Jesus. Oh, I don't know what to think. Oh, I'm nervous about that and everything. And I finally catch up, and I'm running the figure. I'm ready to jump any direction, do whatever. I don't want to look like a moron, though, because I'm running. And I come across the figure. And it's a nun. <laughs> mm. there, there's a, a Catholic um, school that was nearby, and she was just out for a stroll. And, and I just I felt completely, utterly ridiculous afterward. <laughs> uh, let me see. <clears throat> there's no way I could say that name. So I'll just go to the question. Do you ever feel a bit of the blues because you pick up subtle so social clues, like seeing when people lie often kind of would be hurtful, wouldn't it? I think that's similar to what we were just talking about, about getting along with. I think they're talking everybody. about maybe lying about something that may embarrass them, you know, because you yeah. can tell when they're maybe if they're talking about something that sounds better than it actually is. And you can see that they're not being honest about it. And it, that, that kind of bums me out sometimes. <laughs> Somebody's yeah. reading you, Scott. French I, face. I guess Scott doesn't run. <laughs> <laughs> I did when I was little. I did when I was, I was a kid, you know, twice to get right. the mail. Um, Ellen, not Sarah Lee. Awesome group. Thanks, Eric. Well, thank you very much, Ellen. Um. Ravina Denver question. I watched the Senate hearings with Matt Taibbi and the aftermath with Medhi. Have you seen it? And why do I feel like Matt wasn't lying? I don't think Matt Taibbi knows how to lie. Yeah, not, he's not, not a, seen it. Not seen okay. it. And I don't know why you feel he's lying. <laughs> no, I wasn't, I, wasn't <laughs> lying. They were saying, Oh, wait, if I feel like he was. Yes, I don't, I've not seen it, Ravina, and I don't know. Matt, Matt Taibbi is not a complicated acting person. I, he doesn't come off to me as a liar. It's just very. This reminds me of that good. time that we we're that we were doing your show, Eric, and somebody asked a question about QAnon, and I never. Oh seen my QAnon God! Before. Yes, and I, I was remember like, QAnon. That. Me and it was it me, me and, me and, me and me you and and Chase is and like, we're like what's QAnon? QAnon. Yeah, we're like, what is that? I don't know what that is. Yeah, so I'm with Mark on a lot of stuff. I'm not. I'm not up on it. I just. Yeah. As far as news goes, I just have no interest anymore. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I, I was this lying thing is great because because people love this this lying thing, and y you know, you got you got to start thinking like, what what lies should people be able to get away with? Because otherwise, you know, because they're knitted into the fabric of our societies is lies and telling the truth. It's what we're 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 built out of. There's all kinds of things that are untruths that people tell me, and and I let them go because I want to be part of the society, the group. And so, you know, why do you feel like he wasn't, 
have you know why do i feel like matt wasn't lying i mean do you think you should feel like he was lying i mean what like would well, it be okay I, I, I if he wasn't it, lying? maybe it's okay I, I think the congressional hearings are a bad example because one it's not really questioning it's grandstanding at oh. a witness and he was speaking essentially he was for one side or he's speaking more for one side because his statements matched their agenda. So the other side was just laying into him. You're so called this and da, 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 da. Yeah. And he goes, uh, da, da, da. excuse me. I'll take my time back. Thank you. Excuse me. No. And you know, it, it was just anytime you watch the congressional stuff, it, it's very difficult in my opinion to get an actual read of a conversation because I feel like the, Congress people, both sides, of, both parties all oh. around are doing nothing more than spouting off a monologue with a witness there and pretending is questioning. And yeah, Scott, yeah. jump on in. I don't know if you have. I, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know what you're talking I don't watch the news, man. I really don't. I mean, I, if I'm on it, I'll make sure that everything went well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll watch those. I'll watch uh, the news if you're on it, Scott. I'm like, oh, Scott's on the yeah. news. Uh, let's have a look at that then. So I'm not interested in the news. I'm only interested in John. <laughs> what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, What's his hair look like this it. week, you know? Fair yeah, enough. I'm, I'm going to get a haircut, man. Look at the, well, I take <laughs> you are doing your hair. <laughs> All right, it's I get a bad. super chat here from uh, Ellen. Uh, again, thank you. Mark, you should contact me. My okay. family is full of mental illness, orphans, etc. A true shit show. There are so many things. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that... I, I mean, thanks for the invitation. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure that you're selling it, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but I, you know, I do appreciate the, if I run short of mental illness, orphans, etc., in my own life, I will, uh, I'll come calling. Thank you. All right. Um, here's a light one. Who's your favorite comedian? Oh, oh man. Oh. Mm. That's a tough one. Yeah. I really like so hard. I don't know, man. There's so many, there's so many, there's different, there's different types Name three. of three. Just say three. Oh, that, that, I that, can't just say three. I, All right. I mean, I, I just say Brian Kyle Regan. Dunn again. You know him. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kyle's a gimme. But I mean, Brian Regan is, is awesome. Nate Bargatze right now, he's, he's starting to take off and be uh, really good. Um, uh, Big J Okerson, I really like him a lot. Um, oh man, there there are there are so many. Uh, I, they're just see, I would want to do one of those comedy podcasts because I that's the I like that world. I I I used to I've done when I was a producer, I produced some comedy albums that did fairly well, mm. and uh, so I I got in that world. And I don't want to be a comedian; I would never do that. But I mean, watching that as I look at that like sports. Like some people watch sports. That's what I watch. That's I watch comedians. All of my YouTube channels are comedian YouTube channels. I like watching that. So didn't I, your brother produce Fighter and the Kid or do something with them? Oh yeah, he did. Um, they had it was called the Fighter and the Kid 3D. They had these videos that they put out, and my brother directed those and helped write those. You know, Brian Callen is hilarious. Um, He's one of my favorites too. There's just so, there's so many that are so good, you know. Dan Soder's good. Um, uh, Kurt Metzger's awesome. Um, there's just yeah. so I can't I can't nail it down to 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 three or ten. They're Somebody all corrected so you, Kurt. Good. Kurt, <laughs> exactly, Kurt. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mark, you're not off the hook. Uh, no, no, I don't mind not being off the hook. So many current living ones, um, and and my daughter Stella is like massively into comedy, and we we watch hours and hours and hours a day, and she's going through everything, like you know the greats again and again and again and again and again. So that's great. Uh, but I would go back, uh, unfortunately dead now, but 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 uh, the greatest ever, Ken Dodd, um, Doddy, and you may know Ken, you may not. Um, yeah. But but the first the first joke I ever remembered was from. Ken Dodd. I saw him live three times. I worked with him. <laughs> when I worked with him, I paid somebody so I could hold his coat as he mm. walked on stage. I, paid I have his. I have his autograph. I collect old comedians' go. autographs. There you go, Dodd. You know, I had I had Jackie Gleason's uh, SAG card, but I gave it to Jeff Foxworthy. 
So I, I, I collect, I've got everybody's autograph. I've got the three stooges. I've got, you name it, any of the old comedians. I've got all that's, that's the thing I collect. Some people collect, you know, like Greg collects cars and, <laughs> well, I, I think and some people, you know, signature some people are a little cheaper than, cards. than, than some of them are, I'm, some of them are, are, you know, it's tough to find some of them, you know. So I was lucky. I was lucky enough to tell Dodd the joke, the first ever joke that I remembered him saying. First ever joke I remembered because I was a young, young kid and I'd never seen people laugh so much. And I was like, what the hell? What the hell happened there? So I remembered. I remembered what he said, but I didn't understand the joke at the time. And, oh. I, and, and when I met Ken, uh, you know, I, I said, look, I want to I want to tell you, I want to tell you the joke. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's a very good joke. Uh, that's funny. I've got I've got another one. I'm, I'm just going to ask you about, Mark, because you do so much of the presentation. Um, God, I forgot who it was, but I've asked you about the person before. He's a half Swedish, half British uh, presentation coach. Very, very popular now. YouTube everywhere else. Um, um I think I know who you're talking about. Red hair. Yes, yeah. yeah, his name escapes me. R recently wrote a book which I can't understand the title of because I think it's in Swedish. Uh, it could, it could be. But anyway, he he, he commented that Eddie Izzard, yes, Eddie, was yeah, the yeah. most mm. perfect performer that he ever. Um, He's awesome. Watched that, like yeah. every movement, every everything he did. I guess he scored the highest on the scale that the, he ever created. So well, there's Ken, there's Ken Dodd that. who could do who could do six hours i mean he would say at the start of his say say I've, I've i've got the keys and i've locked the doors and so and so and it would hurt it would hurt it was so painful wow to watch ken because he you just laughed so much uh eddie who's now Susie, by the way oh did he change he Susie went is yeah Susie is up. okay um i saw i saw eddie um uh a few months ago a few months ago and you know Eddie, uh, you know, now well, Eddie's no longer a comedian anymore. There's now Susie, who will be a politician. Um, uh, politics. Dang. Um, His first special was awesome. Well, so I saw Eddie is art uh, many, many, many times. And, and I did the same stages as well. Mm. Again, like it hurt. But when I last saw him, it didn't, you know, he, heart wasn't in it. And um, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt anymore. Is it like his ability to go into a into a world that you just didn't know exist? You know, you just yeah. hadn't. Nobody had ever done. You know, a set on on French and English and language yeah. differences. His set on Le Songe dans l'Arbre is just. You know, go and watch it. It's just. It's incredible. Genius. So so yeah, Eddie Eddie is art, extraordinary. I remember one time at Zany's in Nashville, Brian Regan, before he got, before he blew up and got huge, I went and saw him and he must have had a rough day or something because he was killing. I mean, absolutely murdering. Right. And then some woman yelled out something about a birthday card out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And then, and then he addressed it for a second. She was heckling him. And then she said something else and something else. And then he did this thing. And this is the only, I've heard about this, but I've never had it happen to me before. I've never seen it in person. But he started, he would say, he would do something, everybody would laugh. And we would laugh so hard, we'd blow out all of our air. And just before he'd start breathing in, he'd do something else. And then you're trying to breathe in again, and then he'd do something else. And he was attacking the, oh, wow. that, that crowd. It was the damnedest thing I've ever seen. I haven't seen it since, but I've talked to people who go, that's called something. And I can't remember what it's called, but I'd never seen that before. And as, as funny as it was, that's the first time I actually did hurt. I mean, it actually, you, uh -huh. know, you can't breathe. Nobody could. It was... Yeah. That's how funny that guy is. I mean, yeah, and in UK comedy, unbelievable. called rolling an audience, where you do not it? give them, yeah, you do not give them time to bring in their new breath, which builds up the tension for the next laugh. So their laughs yeah. start to that they're, they're running out of oxygen. Yeah, well, he and did so that. In, so, so almost like a panic starts. Around, yeah, around, yeah, you get that audience just just like fighting for their life. Yeah, he was <laughs> around, he was attacking. Really, when it happened. Yeah, he was attacking, and I think yeah. that woman's laughing. And so every time, and then he would do that, but he was getting all of us, you know. You know who else is funny? He's Ricky Gervais. Yeah, that dude is yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Nothing yeah. like I, British comedy, man. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And you know what, Mark, you were saying about 
how at the end his heart's not in it anymore. It makes me think of George Carlin, who mm -hmm. was always one of my favorites. Oh. If you watch the last few, he started to just get kind of bitter, and it was sad. Yeah, but it was, yeah, it was still I mean, funny. It was beautiful, but it, it was a shame. So I took took my daughter along to to see Eddie because you know, in terms of the British greats, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Eddie Izzard is one of the top three. You know, Ken Dodd. There's there's um, uh, you know Eddie Izzard and maybe a few others who you'd go they can roll an audience for hours, but and and just couldn't anymore. Not because doesn't have the skill, doesn't really have the desire anymore to do that to an audience. I think the funniest person walking the planet though was Martin Short. I really do. I think he's the funniest guy alive. Damn, that guy's funny. Hilarious. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. There's, there's your review of, of that review. <laughs> no, I mean, well, Martin Short. Take that how you will. Uh, he's yeah. fine. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, man. That cat's hilarious. Okay. Uh, what um, uh, On the opposite end, what was your um, most uncomfortable slash unpleasant analysis? Any of them that deal with kids, I don't like doing those. I don't like doing those at all because you have to revisit all that. I, I hate that. I hate that. There's that guy. Who's the guy who wrote the book about his son who's a serial killer? Who, who, who's, who was that guy? Dahmer? Dahmer's dad. Mm. Yeah. Dahmer's dad. That was the one for me where I was yeah. like, hang on. What are you doing <laughs> You've written a book, yeah. haven't you? Your son, <laughs> your, book. your son has violently killed a whole bunch of people, and you want to be on TV. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> that, 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 I'm incred, as you can tell, I'm incredulous. Yeah. I, I just don't like the, the kids' ones. I don't like doing those. We have to do them, you know, because it's that's what's, what's going on in pop culture or popular in the news. So we do that, but I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I can I can definitely imagine. All right, um, I'm going to finish out on this question because we've definitely run. Um, Dude, we long. could sit here all day and do this. Right, but I know that um, you, I won't survive it, and I know Mark will oh, sit oh. here all day. <laughs> I know Mark well, will kind of. uh, <laughs> I'll get hungry uh, after a while. Um, S. Jefferson, do you guys ever work with government agencies who are keeping tabs on other leaders or investigating other politicians? And could you say it if you did? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> I'll say I work with government agencies. How's that sound? All right. Um, yeah, I'll just say, yeah, my best answer would be no. Okay. I'll do that too. I'll go with Mark's answer. <laughs> I pick no. Yeah. But, you I, know, I, obviously, I knew, obviously I if we did, there. obviously did. Oh, Mark's yeah, frozen. Look at that. The CIA has, has, look has at stepped that. into it. They've there cut him go. off. <laughs> and and cut that him answers off. that question. Look at that. That's oh, them. Man. That's them. That's CSIS taking us off the air right now from You're Chinese, the only one that froze. Chinese consulate is just around the corner from me. They probably heard You're, what I said. You're the only there. one that froze, Mark. Oh, there we go. See, it is. It is the consulate. I, I think so. Okay. Well, let's go with a safer one and then we'll close on this question. Have you covered someone on the behavior panel that has contacted you after to hire you for consultation? Covered someone on the behavior panel? Uh, I don't think we have. I don't think so. The Wells, maybe. No, Didn't they, they contact you after? Well, before. okay. but Oh, it was before you did? No. Oh. oh, wait. Yeah, because we did uh, that initial thing from... I mean, uh, there's been a there's been agencies that have contacted us, mm -hmm. but not but not the not someone not, no. not, not <laughs> the, well, obviously no no yeah. not government who spy on other government officials because that's illegal. No government agency spies on other government officials. No. That is absolutely illegal, and so it doesn't happen. And I would I'm certainly no part. Of, of any of that illegal stuff. I, I you know, I decry it, obviously. Yes. Thank you, um, Mark Clapper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just saying that really loud for the Chinese consulate, which is two doors down from me. So, um, but I think, I think, um, 
No, I don't think any of the principals within um, within an episode have ever contacted us. I don't think we've had him in the chat. You know, we've had him in the chat. Yeah, that's Gable Tosti, sure. that guy. Sure. He, yeah, yeah. Well, well, and, Gable um, and, the, and the Irish guy who just got done for. Oh yeah, he was in there too talking me, about. Yeah. Okay. What's and they name? use these names that 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 just What's stick out, and they go talk about why well, Gable is a he's a wonderful man. It goes on, <laughs> like nobody would talk. They yes. talk about how wonderful they are and how wrong we are. Yeah, yeah, you know. Oh man, yeah. And the that. name is usually an anagram of theirs. You know, it's 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 so tosty, O Gable. You know, it's like yeah, it's so, it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, it's so bad. And thing is, we get in there, and we read all the comments. You know, some pe people go, we read the com. We actually do read the comments. I know. I spend. Sure too much time in there we decided the first we wouldn't go in there because they're bad some of them were rough you know we're like we don't need to be going in there because that's what joe rogan says all the time don't go don't go read the comments we do and that we have it's so weird man because now we have these relationships with people that are in the comments that we talk to all the time that we know i feel like i know these people they are panelists i feel like and we all feel like that because we say, hey, did you hear to see what's on? Oh, yeah, I saw that. And we'll, we'll text back and forth about what we've heard about them or, or what they've said. It's, it's really weird. It's really weird. That, but we get in there and read all those. You know, a lot of people don't read theirs, but boy, we sure do. I mean, I shouldn't say that. No, I mean, I read, I read all my comments. I can't help it. I make mean, emails for every comment that comes in. So oh, dude, even though I may not be thousands. reading on the site, I, I'm, well, I know I get. Yeah. Um, between four channels, I, I get a few myself. Oh, four oh. channels. Good but, um, Lord, dude. That's yeah. mental. But I, I can't answer all of them. But yes, I definitely read them. And I've heard every single thing about every bad characteristic, even <laughs> in the chats, I, I get a lot mm. of it. So it, it's a treat. It's a treat. What's bad is when they they go after the guests or they ask questions of guests. And I'm like, no, I don't think they're reading my uh, chat. Or my comments. It, it probably <laughs> yeah. I, I've got questions yeah, from we, Greg. We we uh, read Eric. Yeah, Eric's <laughs> chat. Yeah, you know you don't have Eric. enough of your own. You know that you're like, <laughs> oh, they might have a question for me on on Eric's comments for the show. Yeah, yeah, probably not. But okay. So on that note, thank you both so much. What do you have coming up? What's next? Oh, oh, to more show, more behavior panel, more behavior panel. Yeah, a lot of behavior uh, panel. I can, I can, uh, I can tell you this because I got a confirmation today. Um, is that it is looking like? Let's just say it is looking like that we will all be uh, the behavior panel will be at CrimeCon twenty three this year. Where is that? Yeah. That is in Orlando in September. I think twenty second to twenty fourth. Oh, cool! So you can have a booth. Or are you speaking? So we must be. So we must be a true crime channel. I, I can't. Oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm, putting my question. I'm like, I'm like Genesis putting prog rock on an album. Cover. That's right. To the prog yeah. rock festival. That'll be, that, I can't wait for that. It's going to be a blast, man. We're going to have the best time there. Yeah. 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 So we got that coming up. But other than that, we'll be us on our channel doing what we do. Come join us. All right. Yeah. Well, who are you covering? Or do you know for next week? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, and you know, well, I only know hours before usually. Yeah, I think we're <laughs> Greg, Greg and I are talking about this uh, Pepini character. Okay. Um, is what we're dealing with now. Usually what happens is Greg will get a, he'll, he'll go through all the news, see what's popular and happening. And then he'll get a hold of me and we'll go, well, and he'll pretty much decide what we're going to do. Then we'll decide on, on, he'll just, he'll, he'll do what he's, what's called. He'll, um, divide it up into stuff. Then I'll go back and look at those and shorten them, long them, take them out, trade them with something else, depending on what, um, on what the situation is. And then we put it in a drop box and we all go get the videos and then watch them. And then we'll do the show. So I get those done on like Sundays or Mondays and we do the shows on Tuesdays. All right. Well, fantastic. And folks, please remember to subscribe here. If you haven't, um, there's a lot of behavior panel on this channel. Um, the whole group and individuals, uh, Mark and Greg have been on, uh, no, not Mark and Greg, but Scott and Greg, Mark, um, I've had you on with Simon, I've had Chase on with people, uh, different variations all around on the channel, many other great people like Spidey, uh, another individual is Gavin Stone is on quite a bit with me who does body language, and just to let everybody know, when I close out now, please hang on. You're going to be redirected to Gavin Stone with Robin Dreek and Lena Cisco, who have a show going on right now. So if you like body I language. Tell Robin I said, hey. 
Oh, there you go. And oh, sorry, dude. Well, I'll, I'll tell everybody. A that, baton <laughs> across. Exactly. Well, tell them that you're coming from this channel. And if you like what you're hearing there, please subscribe. Gavin is is nearing that 1,000 subscription mark. So it's a, it's a very big deal. Even these guys were there at one time hoping to get to 1,000 subscribers. It's a very difficult threshold. Please oh, yeah. consider doing that. And I'll see you on the next episode.